of the Lord's Day, brothers and sisters in the family of BBCF and those who have joined us from far and near. Let me read a passage from the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 as we prepare to worship. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of God. The passage naturally brings to our mind the Advent season. Please pray that Bible Bhavan may be reopened very soon for our Sunday services. And like Mary, we can ask, how can this be in the midst of pandemic? Well, as long as we follow the SOP, we believe we can do so. Social distancing, hand sanitization, wearing face masks, Temperature scanning, no singing, no junior church, no refreshment, not for senior citizens and for those who have medical issues. So pray for wisdom and we need your support as we take this very important decision very soon. For now, let us pray together as we proceed to worship. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for leading us through the year and bringing us to the Advent season. Lord, your word that came to Mary, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God, speaks to us too. You are the Emmanuel, God with us, even through the pandemic. And so this blessed Lord's Day, we come to worship you. May you truly be adored and exalted Speak to us and continue to strengthen your church. For the glory of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let us now join Pastor Thought and the worship team. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Come family, let's sing together. One, two, three, four. Yeah. 
Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. Yes, He is Emmanuel, God with us. Church, let us give thanks to the Lord for who He is. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, not to ask anything, but humbly giving you thanks for all that you have done for us. We appreciate you for your goodness, and faithfulness in our lives though we have not lived our lives as we should have been but then also you love you love us and care for us lord we continue to give you thanks that you have been growing and strengthening your church even in times like this we give you thanks for the faithful teaching and the preaching of your word day after day week after week we are grateful to you for our pastors who make every possible effort to edify your church. We give you thanks for our weekly ministries and programs that took place last week. Ladies' morning prayer, church now hangout, sultry practices, grief share class, midday kneel, 
junior church online classes, baptism class and other activities of the church. Father, we give you thanks that recording for cantata has begun. And we give you, uh, we give you thanks for many answered prayers and testimonies of your goodness and faithfulness. Lord, we give you thanks for your healing hand upon Reba Matthew, Suvarna's niece, uh, Vikram Rhythm's uncle, George and Rajni Herman, Shobha's brother and sister-in-law, Dr. Felix, a Chinglius relative. Thank you, Lord, for their lives as they, as they are recovering well from COVID. God of life, we give you thanks for many birthdays in the church last week. We give you thanks for eternity. Ramesh, Roshan, Zampui, Shobha, Shamgar, Raja Bhatla, Jessia, Himani, Anchul, David Rajdurai, and we rejoice with Anugrah Pandir as he celebrates his birthday today. Lord, we pray that you give every good thing that they need according to your promise, and they may abide in you and you in them. Lord, we give you thanks for our 8th wedding anniversary. We give you thanks for Rashmit and myself. We also rejoice with brothers Sam Rao and sister Shobha Rao as they celebrate their wedding anniversary today. Lord, we pray that you guard and protect our marriages and add more joy into it. May our love for each other and for you, Lord, grow even more and more. Lord, we love you and we adore you and we offer this thanksgiving in the name of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our online church family. If you are new to our gathering, come and be part of our family time. My name is Divya. And I'm Andreas. We're so glad you're worshipping with us today. Do feel free to comment, drop a message, like and subscribe to our channel on the platform you're using to view the service. Let us know if we can pray for you or be of any help to you. Use the admin's number at 886-063-4892. Use the same number to send us pictures. We've been saying that we intend to present a slideshow of families watching our services from all over the world. And we have received a few pictures, but some have not reached us yet. Please send us, uh, send them to us at 886-063-4892 so our national and international community can be encouraged. Christmas music is in the air, at least at our house. Don't start planning for Christmas late. Get your heart, your family and plans set so we can celebrate our Saviour's birth. And also save the date in your calendars. Our Christmas Cantata Online will premiere on 19th of December. Please start making a list of those you are going to invite. You may be wondering what the next step is that you can take in your spiritual growth. Please join our online courses. Christianity Explored for those wanting to know more about who Jesus is, why did he come and what he wants from us. Baptism class for those committed to follow Jesus. Membership class for those who want to take membership in our church. And grief share for those who have the need of healing as they grieve a dear one. On December 6, we are having a very special program, Surviving the Holidays. After the death of a loved one, you may be worried about the upcoming holiday season. I used to say, um, I wish I could go to sleep the day before Thanksgiving and wake up January 2nd. Introducing Grief Share Surviving the Holidays, a special one-time event that helps you make it through the holiday season. It features an informative video that shows you how to plan your holiday season so you're not overwhelmed by it. You'll also learn how to survive holiday parties and get-togethers, how to handle loneliness, and you'll discover how you can gradually begin enjoying the holiday season again. The Surviving the Holidays video features the wisdom and perspectives of 13 grief recovery experts and interviews with many people who've wrestled with grief during the holiday season. At Grief Share Surviving the Holidays, you'll also have the opportunity to talk about how you're feeling about the holiday season and what you've learned in the video. Plus, you'll receive a holiday survival guide 
It will give you the ongoing support and wisdom you'll need this holiday season. To learn more about Grief Share Surviving the Holidays, talk to the Grief Share leader at your church and visit griefshare.org slash holidays. Please do let us know if you are interested. And now, one of the brothers who received water baptism has something to share. Let us listen in. Greetings church family. I've been an addict most of my life, a gaming addict. I used to play games on a daily basis, minimum 6 hours to a maximum 14 hours. This was wrecking my life and my marriage. Guess how God corrected me. As you might know with the growing tensions between India and China, many Chinese apps were banned in India which included the two games I used to play. I had this urge to know more about God in my life but the Bible sounded very archaic and went over my head most of the times. So how did God help me? There is this pandemic going on called COVID and I had the opportunity to reside in the Bible Bhavan campus and registered myself for the one year course in expository preaching. I was directly confronted with God's word on a daily basis. It was hard to stand before God knowing who I really was, a sinner and the marvelous provision God made in his son, Jesus Christ. Things that made no sense started becoming clearer. I took my baptism classes and decided to surrender my life into God's hand. God's provision and timing are way above my understanding, but they are always perfect. A verse that I hold very dear is from Proverbs chapter 3 verses 11 and 12. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. God's love has been made more evident in my life based on the way He has corrected me and brought me closer to Him. Thank you. Young men and women, start your journey to a meaningful life. If you want to talk to one of us about finding purpose in your life, please send us a note to our admin number and expect to hear from us. Thank you again for your generosity for our COVID-19 emergency aid response. This winter, we plan to distribute blankets to those in need. Thank you for being generous. May the Lord reward you and your household with a warm and bountiful provision. If you want to give towards this initiative, please use this information on the screen. You can also give your tithes and offerings through the many routes on the offer. And of course, please ask them for help from our uh, from the admin. If you need any assistance in making this, these contributions, let us know. Let us thank the Lord for the offering. Heavenly Father, all that we are and all that we have belongs to you. We offer ourselves and a token of our finances to you. Please help us to be faithful with all that you have given to us, that we may use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Welcome to Junior Church Time. We're looking at the New City Catechism question 46 today. And it's a very important question which is there we've been doing from last week. So let's read the question and we'll read the answer all out together. The question is, what is the Lord's Supper? Let's read the answer together. Christ commanded all Christians to eat bread and to drink from the cup in thankful remembrance of him. Let's do that one more time. The question is, what is the Lord's Supper? Let's read the answer together. Christ commanded all Christians to eat bread and to drink from the cup in thankful remembrance of him. Let's listen to Uncle Koshi as he tells us more about the Lord's Supper. Thank you, Anita, and good morning, children. 
we saw how baptism is both sign and seal. This is also true for the Lord's Supper. It represents the promises of God that through the finished work of Christ, we are his people and he is our God. It is also the confirmation of this promise since only God's family, his people, may participate in it. Jesus asked us to proclaim his death through the Lord's Supper. What does this mean? We are to remember that he willingly died, the perfect lamb for our sin on the cross. In the celebration of the Lord's table, we also celebrate God's renewed presence in our life. Remember, Adam and Eve chose their own way over God's when they ate the forbidden fruit. As a result, they and we in them lost God's presence. At the Lord's Supper, we are reminded and celebrate the fact that now the invitation to enjoy God's presence has been renewed, all because of the atoning work of Jesus Christ. The table of the Lord's Supper is also a reminder that we can now commune with each other in love. People who once were enemies are now family members, the fellowship of believers, the Christ community. The table also strengthens us by reminding us of God's grace every time we participate in it, on the community and on us individually. The table is also anticipating the marriage supper of the Lamb where the church as bride will unite with her bridegroom, the Lord Jesus. And then the Lord who serves us, whatever we need even now, will fulfill us all once again once and for all time. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the importance of the Lord's table, for instituting it so we can remember you, your sacrifice, your love, your willingness to die for us when you went to the cross. Thank you, Lord, that when we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, we remember your love for us and what you did. Thank you for the community table. That is the Lord's Supper. We bless your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Uncle Koshi, for telling us the importance of the Lord's Supper. Children, the activities will continue to come to you. We're also celebrating four birthdays that took place last week. They were Leah's, Caitlin Romilla, Samuel and Suhani Patel. So if you have their parents' numbers, do wish them a belated happy birthday. We are also having our junior church online classes this evening and also over the week. So don't forget to join them. We will see you next week again on JC Time. We shall continue to bring the needs of the church in prayer at this time. Let us all pray. Almighty God and Eternal Father, we come in your presence gladly and humbly, acknowledging that through all of the ages of time from everlasting to everlasting, you are God, that your providence is our security, that your provision for all our needs underpin all of our going out and coming in. And despite the fact that by nature we are like sheep who wander away, and consider our own agendas and seek to do our own will, still you are a seeking God. You come pursuing us and saving us and securing us and keeping us. And the very fact that we are worshipping you this morning testifies to that truth that you are the one who keeps us kept. We thank you that the good work which you begin in our lives, you have pledged yourself to bring to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. 
we are able to take these ancient words, the Bible, upon our lips and make them our own. That you are the one who takes us up out of our darkness and our deadness and makes us alive with Christ. That you are the one who takes our songs and transforms them into praise of you, the living God. That you are the one who orders our steps and marks our path and keeps us. So Lord, we confess to you our need of you afresh. Fresh cleansing because our hearts are so readily turned to our own ways. Fresh enabling of your power so that you may be able to do that, what you have called us to do. So that law which you have written in our hearts might be not simply a duty to us, but may be a delight. That we may be able to say, I delight to do your will, O Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for our church very specially. And we want to bring all those who are suffering from COVID-19. We pray for Shem, Andrew's neighbors, Mr. Mukesh Sharma, Matthew Babu and Jubin Matthew, Kapil's father, cousin, and their driver, Gibson, Angela, and her daughter, Abby, Ben and Josh and Jen Guzman, Mercy and her husband Nimal, Brother Subimol colleagues, Janet Singh Lord, and she is not responding to any treatment Lord. And we pray for Timothy Ganmai's father and auntie. We pray for Kavita as well, Lord. Lord, we know that several have lost jobs, several have curtailed income, several have lost their businesses. Oh Lord, we turn to you for the economic impact of COVID. Lord, we very specially want to pray for Pastor Stephen's daughter-in-law awaiting lung and heart transplant. We pray for Lupan's father, Mr. Gongmai, treatment for cancer. For Leslie Jacob in these last stages of cancer, Lord, keep him comfortable. Linda's mother suffering from the outcome of the stroke she had. For Rhythm's grandmother, Save her, Lord, from a relapse of cancer. Lord, we very specially pray for those who are traveling at this time. Pastor Abuon in Manipur, Sangmais travel to Manipur on the 28th. Anthony and family travel to Manipur. Sean's travel to Manipur. Ravi's travel to Andhra. Adi's travel to Nagaland. Eran, Bemo and family travel to Nagaland. Joyce and family travel to Papua New Guinea. Lord, we pray for several members of our church who are at home during this Christmas season. Lord, keep them safe. Lord, very specially we want to pray for your servant Jim Kramer who has served with us in many of the earlier children's camps suffering from this kidney ailment and on dialysis. O oh Lord, we pray for your servant. Lord, heal him. Lord, we also pray for those who are not well, Lord, and are, have health, long-term health issues, Lord. We bring them to you, Lord, many in our church. We bring the elderly in our church to you, Lord, and we are so concerned about the elderly, Lord. Keep them safe, Lord, from COVID, but also that you would save their souls. 
Lord, we continue to pray for professionals and students in other cities that are there, Lord. Lord Jesus, keep our children and our families safe in these countries and in these places. Lord, we pray for the oncoming engagement and wedding. Engagements today of Ravi and Sean, Anil and Muskan, the oncoming wedding of Than Chok and Judy in February next year. Oh Lord, we pray that you would, these young ones in our church, Lord, as they come into the joy of engagement and marriage and start on this new adventure and this new journey, that they would be found leaning on you. We pray for the expectant mothers, very especially our dear sister Moan, as she goes through these peculiar challenges, Lord. Oh Lord, have mercy. We pray for Sonia Palapega, Chingri, Priscilla, Sabrina, Swati. Lord, we pray that you would enable these mothers to bring their babies safely into this world. Lord, we very specially pray for those who have again suffered bereavement during this time, very specially our sister Zamfui and the loss of her uncle on the 23rd morning. Lord, we pray for students having their exams in this season, those preparing for the FMGE exams, those preparing for the NEET exams, those preparing for the ETCP exam, those preparing for DU exams next month, and very especially for Isaac's thus travel to Ukraine for his college studies. We pray for Isaac Jr. and Sarah's travel back home this week. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for all the online virtual world in which you have brought us and all those who's, who view us and all those who find us on the web and those who listen to us. Oh Lord, we pray that your spirit would work in their lives. Very specially, Lord, we pray for our Christmas cantata on the 19th, 24th and 25th, that it would be a great blessing. Lord, we continue to pray for the salvation of many souls during this time, people asking questions and people who have lost loved ones. Lord, we pray that through our witness, one billion souls would be saved. Continue to pray for our nation, Lord. Save and protect it, Lord. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our nation, the president and governors, prime minister and his cabinet, leaders of the state government and leaders who are in opposition and center and in state. Lord, that the voice of the people will continue to be strengthened in this nation and democracy will continue to grow and strengthen and be built up. We pray for the members of our armed forces, Lord, serving our nation faithfully at great sacrifice, very especially those guarding our vital installations. Thank you, Lord, that we can rest in this, that our Heavenly Father is aware of our situations, and your eyes scan us. You know us ultimately, the words of our mouth before we speak them, and the reason that we come to you and pray about that concerning which you already know is because you bid us to do so. And that's why we have brought this whole list to you. We come to pray because Jesus said to his followers that you are always to pray and not give up. Many times we find ourselves giving up day by day, perhaps even week by week, knowing all the time 
that we have a heavenly father. The same father who cares for the birds as they fly around us. You are the sovereign God in the details of our lives. And therefore we are able to come to you. We pray that where the gospel is being presented, that it will take root. And where it has taken root in the lives of people, that they may be able to live as children of God. Also that the things that are said concerning Jesus as the resurrected King, may stir up our affection and our zeal even in the midst of losses and unusual times. We pray, gracious Father, with thanksgiving for the gifts that you have given us in our families, in our homes, and in some cases, in our employment, some of us find ourselves on the wrong side of that equation, and we are beginning to wander, and we are becoming restful, and we take And ask from you your word, which says to wait upon you, to rest in you, to trust in you, to enlist ourselves in your service, to seek the enabling of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the way in which you allow us to spread the news of the gospel when we go about our daily routines. And we thank you that along with that you have given us opportunities through ministry in our nine locations. We pray, Lord, those who lead it and guide these ministries, that you will keep them in humility of heart and strengthen in them with zeal and help them never to go weary in doing good. We ask for that they today might be strengthened in their inner man and they might be increasingly convinced that you, the God who provides all things richly for us to enjoy, is the one who is able to do more than we could ever conjure up, thinking or imagining or asking how wonderful it is that you are far more willing to bless us then we are even to take the time to ask you. We bring our lives to you. Thank you for the faithfulness of our church family as we find ourselves in these strange days. May we be a further testimony to the watching world that what happens to someone when someone has surrendered their lives to Jesus and the change that is there, runs through every dimension of our lives. So we surrender our lives to you once again, and we give ourselves to you, gracious God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Tell me the story of Jesus Write on my heart every word Tell me the story most precious Sweetest that ever was heard Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. Glory to God in the highest, peace.
peace and good tidings to earth. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Fasting alone in the desert, tell of the days that are past. How for our sins he was tempted, yet was triumphant at last. Tell of the years of his labor, tell of the sorrow he bore. He was despised and afflicted, homeless, rejected, and poor. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the grave where they laid him, tell how he liveth again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay, let me weep while you whisper, love paid the ransom for me. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Shall we kindly be upstanding in honor of the reading of God's Word? We are in the fourth address on the Advent, and we are still found in Colossians chapter 1. So if you would turn with me in Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 to 23. Family of God, let me remind you that God word comes to us in the right season and if we allow the Spirit of the Lord to work in our hearts then there can be a transformational experience for you so do not consider this as yet another routine but as a time when the Lord wants to speak to you and wants to change you so family, this is God's word, Colossians chapter 1, 19 to 23. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of the flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. May the Lord help us understand and apply this word to our lives. Please be seated. Let us pray. 
Father, what we know not, please teach us. What we have not, please give us. What we are not, please make us. Like bl blind Bartimaeus, crying from the roadside. Jesus, King of, Son of David, have mercy on me. Don't leave me on the side. I want to see. Enable each one of us to see your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of my sermon is Advent is God Reconciled with Sinners. There are always two basic questions about Christmas. How did the Son of God came to earth? The answer the Christian faith has always given for the last 2000 years is incarnation. God became human. Why did the Son of God came to earth is the second question. The answer is reconciliation. Son of God came to earth for our reconciliation uh, with God. And that is why we sing in that carol, Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners are reconciled. That's really the purpose behind Christmas. God and sinners reconciled. Why did he become human? Verse 22 says, He has reconciled us in his body of the flesh by his death. That is what we are celebrating at Advent. That is what the whole preparation is all about. There was a problem with us. We were in an unreconciled relationship. He had to do something about it. Jesus Christ came to reconcile us because we cannot save ourselves. Every human effort at saving himself results in a miserable failure and let down. We could not help ourselves. And therefore, God had to come. So my first point to us this morning is, why would we need to be reconciled with God? Verse 22 gives us the answer. It says, in order to present you holy and blameless and above a reproach before him. Paul tries to explain our spiritual condition referring to the Old Testament. He is referring to the temple ceremonies and rituals. We are not ready to be presented before God because we are unholy and blemished. And what was the ritual? At the center of the temple was the holy place and the place where God, where God dwelt, his presence. If you wanted to go there, you had to first clean yourselves. You had to go with a sacrifice that was without blemish 
You could not go empty-handed. When you read those regulations in the books of Leviticus and Numbers, you are overwhelmed by the details. And therefore, a lot of people stop reading the Bible after they have reached Numbers or Leviticus. They just can't get their heads around it. Very specially all the laws that are there and in our current context, the details of the cleanliness laws. The whole issue is this, that you were not fit to be presented before the presence of God if you were not clean. You couldn't go to worship God unless you washed. You couldn't go with any kind of dirt on your body. You had to have clean bodies. In addition to that, you had to be physically whole as well. You couldn't have any skin diseases. You could not be a leper. You couldn't have a hemorrhage of any sort. There could not be a flow of blood. So there could not be any blemishes. You could not be disfigured and you could not be a eunuch. Then there were, on top of all of this, the dietary laws. All of those make you clean, fit for going before God without uh, blemish. And we get pretty overwhelmed when we read this. You know, even the clothes uh, that you wore had to be of a certain same fabric. Could not be a mixture. Wow. <laughs> and we can get so easily lost in the details of the laws uh, that are there. You have to stand back and say, what is the purpose of all these things. Why are so many details over here? What is the purpose of these things? You realize how detailed these rituals were. You realize there was almost no way to remain clean. If you worked day and night at it, just by the normal way in which you went about life, you were continually getting unclean. You could not even go out in the public during the day because you would come in contact with dead things. You could come in contact with infected people and you could get infected yourself you might even get a disease. So the whole point is this family, it was extremely difficult to remain clean. And when I'm giving you all of these details and as restraint, I have been in giving you these details. I want you to keep them in contrast to the grace, mercy, favor of God in the Advent. How easy God has made this for us now. The physical cleanliness laws say through all of this detailed uh, ritual, there is something wrong with you spiritually. That is the point. It is not that with our human efforts, I can be clean physically. But the whole point is this, that spiritually, you and I are in an unclean condition. By just the normal way in which we go about life, there is almost no way for us to avoid uncleanliness. 
We continually are getting into a position where we are unfit spiritually before God. We are unreconciled. We are unholy. We are unworthy. We are not fit for his presence. Those laws were telling us precisely that. In fact, when you go through all of that, these are visual aids. Paul says, the temple rituals were pointing to the unchanging spiritual realities. We are unfit for the presence of God. You realize that? We are just unfit for the presence of God. And just in case you are uh, getting overwhelmed by these laws of cleanliness, let me illustrate something for you. I want to ask you, what is the purpose of human laws? Many of us are lawyers and probably can give a very quick answer of what is the purpose of the human law. Let us, let us understand human law and then I will come back to God's law. So if I ask you a question, what are the consequences of the disobeying of the human laws? Why do we have them even? Very simply, to live at peace with one another. Do you know what does that mean? That generally speaking, humans are incapable of living at peace with one another and therefore there are laws. And just in case you are overwhelmed with the cleanliness laws and the laws that are found in Numbers and Leviticus, uh, look at the Indian Penal Code. Look at all the other laws that are there in this land. And all their interpretations and all the different precedents of the judgments that have been passed. And how the laws are operative. It is not easy. But basically they are there is because we just can't, humans cannot be dependent on getting along with each other. So what we do is we steal, we cheat, we lie, we kill, we do all sorts of things. We do all sorts of things to get money. And there are laws in which lawfully you can earn. So what is the content of the human law? The law demands that we treat others as nothing less than what we are. If we trample upon each other, treat each other as less than uh, what they are, there will not be any peace. So what are the consequences then of breaking the laws? There would be consequences. If somebody breaks in into your house and steals precious things, or somebody robs a bank and then is arrested and then is presented before a judge and he says, Standing in front of the judge, I am sorry. What do you think the judge will say? That's not good enough. <laughs> That's not good enough. Because now you are in an unreconciled state as far as the law is concerned and as far as the community is concerned. And to get reconciled, 
you have to go through the justice what justice demands a fine an imprisonment or both and the term and the amount there is a debt that has to be paid until the debt is paid you are not going to have the regular privileges of being a citizen this is what happens if somebody is convicted of a crime they might be put in prison until the debt is paid now let's look at the divine law what does the bible say is the purpose of the divine law what is the purpose so we can live with god in peace and in fellowship that is the purpose what is the content of the divine law to treat god as nothing less than what he is to love him with all of your heart with all of your soul with all of your mind and with all of your strength why why he is your creator that's why what are the consequences of disobeying god's law when you decide to live your life as if you belong to yourself as if you are your own creator what are you doing you are treating him as less than what he is you have broken the law uh, don't you see it and when you break god's law you can't just say i am sorry there is a debt that has to be paid there is much more this is much more serious than breaking human law if there is a creator god a god to whom we owe everything you owe then a debt that is infinite roman chapter 1 explains every what every human being knows what do we know if there is a god who created me i owe that god a debt i can't possibly pay and live i owe that god a debt i can i can can't possibly make good do you realize family what the law is saying the law is saying we are unclean we are unholy we are blemished we are in an unreconciled relationship with god we cannot say there is no problem there has to be a payment paul shows us we need to be reconciled because we are unholy and we are blemished and that's why paul says to us right at the beginning that was the purpose he has now reconciled us in his body of the flesh by his death in order to present us holy and blameless and above reproach before him there is a need to be reconciled uh, with god and i said to you just now you cannot just say i am sorry my second point is how costly this reconciliation is this is not easy it is very costly reconciliation verse 20 and through him to reconcile to himself all things whether on earth or in heaven by making peace by the blood of his cross did you see that this is not going to be cheap incarnation 
God becoming human. God in a manger. Looks very interesting, fanciful, fantastical. But it is very costly. Leviticus chapter 16 talks about the Day of Atonement. On the Day of Atonement, there are two goats. The high priest, it says in chapter 16, shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat. Look, look at this process. Look at this detail. The scripture always carry detail for our advantage. So he lays his hand on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of the people of Israel, all their sins, all their shortcomings, and he shall put them on the head of the goat and send it away in the wilderness. That's why you hear the word sin bearer. The other goat also, which is without defect, was then slain for the sins of the people. The Old Testament says, when you lay hands, it represents you. When you touch the sacrifice, before you touched it, it was without blemish. Is blamelessness represents you. But as you touch it, it gets your blemishes and now it represents you. Its perfection becomes your perfection and your imperfection becomes its imperfection. You know, that's why we say the grand exchange takes place. What it means to be a Christian is to see that Christ Jesus is that sacrifice without defect. Do you know what it means to be a Christian? It means to spiritually lay your hands upon Jesus like the high priest did on that goat. You lay your hands on him and his blemishlessness becomes yours and your blemishes become his. He gets what your sin deserves. The religious leaders, what did they do? The Pharisees. They twisted the clean laws so that in their own minds, the physical cleanliness was virtually the same as spiritual cleanliness. They were very proud that they were now fit for God because they were so clean. They were so meticulous in keeping every detail of the law. So now they are acceptable uh, before God. The lepers, the eunuchs, the foreigners, the woman with the flow of blood, they felt so unclean. They could never go to the temple. So they came after Jesus. The legalistic code made them feel unfit. And the legalistic code made the other people feel fit. So the woman with the flow of blood came up and touched him and healed him. Now, you know, uh, yes, this is very emotional. Yes. Uh, this is, uh, you know, we, we, we love that, that this woman comes from behind and quietly touches the hem of his garment and she is made whole. But look at the whole impact of it. Do you know this is very startling? 
Do you know why? Up until this time, whenever the unholy touches the holy, someone dies. Take a look at Mount Sinai. God says, don't touch the holy mountain. If a sinner touched the holy mountain, they will die. Anyone who touched the holy ark of the covenant died. As the ark of the covenant was once being transported, the oxen pulling the cart stumbled. Uzza took hold of the ark, lest it fall. The wrath of God was kindled against Uzza. And he died instantly. Anyone who touched the holy fire in the temple died. Nadab and Abihu in the book of Numbers died. The woman with the flow of blood touches Jesus. And what happens? She lives and is healed. And here is why. She was unholy. He was holy. She touched him. Why did she live? Because in the infinite wisdom and grace of God, the wonders of the ages takes place. When the unholy touches the holy, someone still has to die. But in this case, Jesus, the Holy One, dies. It is the Holy One who dies. She did make him unclean. Her uncleanliness went to him. That's a picture of what it means to be a Christian. You have put your hands on Jesus. I touched him. And instead of me, the unholy dying, my uncleanliness goes to him. The holy one is the one who dies. He does not make me dead. I make him dead. He died so that we could live. We got his blemishlessness. So he could get our blemishes. So that we now stand before God. Represented by Christ. As holy. Verse 22. He has now reconciled in his body of the flesh. By his death. In order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him you are presentable now family as if you have done that and you may be saying done what done what she did touched him the unholy touches the holy the unholy touches the holy, the holy becomes unholy and dies. The unholy becomes holy and lives. If you spend some time, would you spend some time, I would say, meditating on what that really says? When you look at your own condition and you realize that this whole law is pointing towards Jesus and is pointing me towards Jesus. If you meditate on this, there would be a joy in your life. There will be a confidence in your life. that COVID will not be able to extinguish, that unemployment will not be able to extinguish, that remaining single will not be able to extinguish, that losing anything 
will not be able to extinguish that joy, that settledness, that groundedness, because you have been made new in Christ Jesus. My final point to us this morning is, what is the outcome of this reconciliation? Verse 22, in order to present you holy and blameless. What does that mean? In order to present you holy and blameless. Somehow it means we are beautiful to him. You may be in your 60s, in your 70s, in your 80s. And you look yourself in the mirror and you will say, yeah, this is faded glory. This is not what I used to be. Family, what you will be, it still has not appeared. But one day, we will be like Jesus. And what he is anticipating when he looks at you is he finds us presentable. <laughs> you know, many a times earlier when we used to visit people's home and the host or the hostess will take a little time to come and they would say, oh, sorry, you know, we were making ourselves presentable. Now what happens is on the Zoom or on the FaceTime, on the WhatsApp video, the video is not opened on the Zoom talks and you ask them, would you open the video please? They say, I am not presentable. I am not presentable. Do you see that all of us have got this within our own self, in the human psyche, we have the DNA trace. To our first father's sin, we know we are not presentable. And what Jesus Christ has done to us, he's making us presentable. And not just that, not that we are just beautiful, but he's proud of us. He loves us like that. Let me illustrate this for you. In Matthew's genealogy of Jesus, there are a lot of forefathers of Jesus that are mentioned. But some foremothers are also mentioned. Some of you who have been part of this church, we did uh, one uh, Christmas, a series on the foremothers of Jesus. Matthew is very, very careful in selecting foremothers of Jesus. Tamar. How many of us know Tamar? She was an incest survivor. Bathsheba. She was an adulteress with David. Rahab. She was a prostitute. Ruth. She was a pagan Moabite. Do you know if this was written by a modern script writer for the life of Jesus, he would have omitted this. Oh no, we cannot have this. This is not politically correct. This is not socially correct. This will just bring us uh, the wrong publicity. We cannot include these women in Jesus' lineage. Why do you think Matthew sticks those women in there? These are Gentiles and these are sinners. And all the people who used to be ritually unclean, all the people who used to be cut off from the temple of God. The answer is, your genealogy is the people you are proud of. They are your family. 
It means if you came to God through Jesus, if you lay your hands on him, treat him as what he says he is, then it does not matter who you are. It does not matter what you have done. You can be part of Jesus' family. And he is proud of you. His love and his grace abound over you. What it means is that now you are absolutely free of all acquisition. Jesus Christ has paid the debt. And that's why in 1 John 1 9 it says, If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There has never been in the history of the world such a radical claim that such a relationship with the Creator God is possible. Those of us who have this relationship, no, it gives us the joy and the confidence that can never be put off. The last thing I have to point out is that God became human, verse 20 says, to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven. The whole idea behind Christmas, the idea that God would become human, is not simply to take our soul which is falling apart and put it together, but to take the entire universe that is falling apart and to put it together. Are you feeling that this Advent, the world is falling apart? Do you feel that in the last nine months, the world is falling apart? Do you feel that? Do you know you can celebrate Christmas? Because Christmas is all about God putting my soul and the universe, which is falling apart. He's putting them uh, together. Christmas, therefore, can work against all that is happening around us. Christians can be involved and can work against physical decay, social decay, and spiritual decay. Did you get it? We have to work against physical decay, social decay, and spiritual decay. We can get out there and heal bodies. And some of you are doing such an amazing work in the hospitals. And we are so grateful to our churches, doctors and nurses and medical personnel. You can go out there and heal bodies. We can get out there and work against poverty. How many of our teams have been out there feeding the poor, providing face masks? And now in the winter, again, the goal is 4,000 blankets, slippers, woolen caps, sweaters, shoes to provide them. We can heal bodies, work against poverty, and we can get out there and seek people to believe in Christ. And we do that. And we are getting ready to do that through our cantata. Because we know in the end, God is going to reconcile all things to himself. Everything will be healed. Everything will be brought together. That's the reason we can sing at Christmas, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. 
That is the joy and confidence we have at Advent. Remember, for you to really celebrate Christmas, it is not just to have the experience of great Christmas music. Enjoy the Christmas decoration and treats. What you really have to do is think of the glad tidings. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? Say what may the tidings be which inspire your heavenly song. Are you reconciled with God? Christmas would be different if you are reconciled with Him. The joy would be different. The purpose would be different. Think about the tidings. Let the glory of Christmas take hold of you because it emanates from the truth. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful for this reconciliation that Christmas signifies. Help us, Lord, to be reconciled to you if we are not as yet through Jesus Christ, the sin-bearer, Thank you for all of us who have put our hands on Jesus. And we have found that cleanliness, forgiveness, mercy, and grace of God. And enable us that Christmas to go out and heal bodies, work against poverty, and seek people to believe in Christ. Praise God from whom Blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Kindly be upstanding for the benediction. Therefore go out into the world with great joy and the grace of Bethlehem's matchless child, the love of the God who never ceases to amaze and the fellowship of the Spirit who never varies will be with you now and evermore. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, we have had the joy of worshipping together. Let us now prepare to go for the Zoom Breakout Fellowship. You would have received the link that would have been sent to you if you are part of the broadcast list. If you did not receive the link, you can still pick up the meeting ID and the password that will be provided on the screen right here. As part of the worship, if you want to take part in the offering, the offering guideline will appear on the screen. We hope to see you there in the meeting. The pastors would like to see you, talk with you with what God has spoken to us today and then pray. Next Sunday, same time, the Lord willing, we'll be back to worship together in this fashion. God bless you.